Welcome to MU Ideas. My name is Eddie Johns and I am the Guidance Counselor and Student Activities Coordinator here at the school. The teachers and I have put together a video to highlight the actual classes we offered over our summer session too, to allow you to get a glimpse of our teaching and learning style. This video covers five classes including food science, global food trends, English, the stories and what they teach us, social science, the individual in a social environment, health science, the human body and infectious disease, and the total clinic. We hope that you enjoy this video. Food science is an emerging field that has gained much popularity in the world today. During the session, the students learned about different aspects of the food industry and the techniques used by food scientists. Most of the topics were, were accompanied by experiments to magnify the students' understanding upon the topic. What you see in this video is a demonstration of how my concept of a food science lesson is. Firstly, the theories are explained to the students, which is followed by an, an inquisitive action to the students to make sure the theoretical part is well understood before we move on to the experimental part. The second part, which involves a series of scientific experiments, since every scientific theory needs to be proven. Today, it is enzymes in fruits and how food industries prevent unwanted browning that occurs readily after a fruit has been cut. Apples contain an enzyme called polyphenol oxidase, which upon contact with oxygen in the air converts a compound known as polyphenol, a colorless compound, to melanin, a brown pigment similar to those found on human skin. Here, the students use vitamin C and sodium bisulfite to inhibit the formation of melanins. The third part is merely as important since the students get to express their knowledge through laboratory reports and quizzes. Lab reports are essential for the communication of scientific findings and to state whether the theories learned are valid. What you're watching is a presentation of the last day of a series of lessons on folk tales and fairy tales. We spent the first two weeks of this session working on folk tales and fairy tales, first studying them. As you will first see the story comparison chart, we talked about how each story has the same elements. You've got the title, obviously, of a setting, the characters, a problem, a solution, and then there's a purpose for folk tales being written and fairy tales. Then after we've studied about four or five of our stories, we've done the three little pigs. We even looked at the Thai folk tale, the farmer and the cobra, and then the riddle from uh, England. Then we went to this next form, the folk tale problem solving recipe, which was how to write a problem within a folk tale. And this was the generic form we used to start our stories. Every student was now going to write a story in a folktale form. As you see on the video, this is the last day of working on it. The last information we worked on was that this, all stories were past tense. The students have been having some difficulty with past tense, so we reviewed past tense and also pre past perfect. But as you see in the pictures, or excuse me, the video, we are finalizing and writing a writing workshop where the students spent the day writing their stories and I walked around and worked with them on their stories. She started writing Harry Potter when she was doing... Okay, so we are meeting, this is the third group and today we are working on family values. So the class brainstormed the differences between Thai traditional values and the non-traditional values that would be more Western. 
They're working on a five paragraph essay that is describing whether their family tends to be more traditionally Thai in their family values or more Western in their values. And if you come over here, you can see these are the traditional Thai values that the students came up with, respecting the king, respecting elders, respecting other people because of the wine, um, being good-natured, self-sufficient, being forgiving, having harmony, and thinking of the group. So the students came up with all of these traditional Thai values. And then I've helped them brainstorm some of the more Western ideas, such as thinking of an individual, do what makes them happy, make the world a better place, education is the key to success, and treat everybody equally. If you come over here, you can see we're working on being able to write a five-part essay begins with the introduction and the main idea. So I ask the students based on the question of the essay topic what the main idea would be. They identify the values of my family are either the same as or different than Thai traditional values because A, B, and C. Each of these are then separate supporting paragraphs that are in the middle and then the conclusion wraps up the introduction. So what's going to happen is the students right now are working on writing their essay. Tomorrow we will work on doing a final copy and revising it. They're also going to be putting together a family crest which is going to symbolize the values of their family. And then on Friday, students will take both of these pieces of work and use it to present to class. So they're doing reading. We have a short story that is defining what family values are. They're doing writing and revision through their essays. Uh, they're doing speaking as they do their presentation. And they're doing listening when we all work together to brainstorm and come up with the main themes of their writing. Okay, today is the day that the students are going to be presenting the work that they've been doing on family values. Whether their family values reflect traditional Thai values or if they reflect more non-traditional values. We are going to have each student present the essay that they wrote to the class, and it's going to be graded on a rubric. So these are the different parts of the rubric. It will be a zero to a six for their grade. The components are going to be pronunciation and delivery, communication strategies, vocabulary and language, and ideas and organization. These are actually the two components of the things that I'm looking for when I grade their writing. I'm not doing all of the different parts of an essay, I'm just focusing on ideas and organization. So, we're going to be looking at volume, fluency and speed, eye contact, sentence patterns and grammar, and finally, the reasons that they present, details, and main idea, and making sure that the main idea is supported through the reasoning and details in the writing. Okay. So, when it rains, you have a huge water drop that it drops to the ground because the water drop the health science course named the human body and infectious diseases is divided into three main parts carefully tailored in order to enhance student learning process. The first part of the course was aimed to introduce students to the basic knowledge about human body. Students were taught about major human organ system, focusing on the system that are of particular importance to keep the human body healthy and free from infectious diseases. The two systems covered were the integumentary system, or commonly known as the skin, and the immune system and the functions and the players were also covered in class. The second part of the course was aimed to introduce students to the field of health science and infectious diseases. 
students who introduced five major medical breakthroughs that have saved millions of lives over the past few centuries. Students were encouraged to understand the principle behind these scientific discoveries and how the scientists were able to come up with the conclusions of their finding in order to help the students comprehend the cause and effect relationships supported by scientific evidence. Moreover, the students were taught about some of the major infectious diseases that continue to have a significant impact on the world's population today. The story about the success of smallpox eradication due to a campaign led by the World Health Organization, or commonly known as the WHO, that have allowed the human um, population to be completely free from the disease since 1979. Two documentaries, one from the BBC World and one from the History Channel, were shown to the students. And to help the students comprehend the big picture of health concerns that human population are currently facing, an up-to-date front-page news article from the CNN regarding the H7N9 bird flu outbreak in China was examined. Students were taught why the health officials were on high alert when the outbreak began a few weeks back. The last part of the course requires students to conduct an experiment, not only to introduce students on how to conduct an experiment, but also to help confirm what students have already learned inside the class. Students were taught on how to form a scientific hypothesis, report their findings in a, on an objective manner, and subsequently draw conclusions from their findings. This session was conducted after students wrote their first drafts reflecting on their career choices in relation to one of the MUIDS core qualities including strategic learners, innovative thinkers, articulate communicators, morally intelligent persons, altruistic global citizens, leaders for the future. The aim of this session was to increase students' understanding of integrating the qualities of being a MUIDS student to that of their future career choices, so that students can learn how to write persuasively. The session was divided into three parts. A. What is a persuasive essay? B. What are the steps to writing a persuasive essay? C. How can you relate your career choices to one of the MUIDS core qualities? In part A, I have briefly explained what writing persuasively means, gave examples of persuasive essays, and how it differs from other genres of writing. Then I emphasized on the importance of of purpose and audience in persuasive essays. In part B, I focus on giving students logical steps to follow in constructing their essays, such as how to read a prompt, draw a mind map, chart outline, writing a thesis, topic sentences, and writing supportive details to make their arguments more convincing, in hope that this would give them a better understanding of the writing process. In part C, I chose how being a deckhand on a commercial cruise ship, one of the career choices that a student made needs to master the skills of a strategic learner. To help students see the connection between a strategic learner and the job of a deckhand, I presented a YouTube video of a trainee deckhand and then demonstrated how I could align the qualities of being a strategic learner with that of a deckhand using a chart. The result of the video of the lesson was a success, as the quality of the students' essay and draft improved compared to the first drafts. More students were able to do two things. First, use explanation and supported evidence to explain their arguments in their essay. Secondly, relate the characteristic of their career choices to one of the MUIDS core qualities. This video details parts the introductory parts of the lesson when I introduced the concept of persuasion. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about our teaching and learning style here at MUIDS. Should you have any questions regarding our faculty or school, please feel free to contact us and someone will be available to assist you.